it's your girl Bengali Black coming at you live from Bengali Black Productions. Guys, it's a scorcher outside. And when it gets too hot, I like to cool down with one of my favorite treats. That's right, I'm talking about ice cream. This confection is made of simple ingredients like milk, ice, and sugar, but it packs a whole lot of tasty history in every bite. But don't believe me, the facts are all in the past. So let's get the inside scoop right here on Nacho Typical News. In order to understand where this frozen treat comes from, we have to start at the beginning. The origins of ice cream can be traced back to China around 618 AD during the Shang Dynasty. Early Chinese ice cream was a little different than the ice cream we eat today. Their version was made with cow, goat, or buffalo milk that was heated with flour. Camphor, an aromatic substance harvested from evergreen trees, was added to enhance the texture and flavor. The mixture was then placed into metal tubes and lowered into an ice pool until frozen. Emperor Tang, who ruled over this dynasty for a period of time, is credited with making the confection popular throughout the region. One taste of this delicious treat had the emperor sending men out to the mountains to bring back ice, which was then flavored naturally with honey and fruit. This became the standard way to finish off a dinner with a cold dish of flavored ice. Ice cream eventually made its way to Europe. Many people credit Marco Polo with bringing it to Italy. However, there is no concrete evidence that this was true. We do know that in the 15th century, a Sicilian man named Antonio Latini, who worked for a Spanish viceroy in Naples, is credited with being the first person to write down a recipe for a sorbetto. Sorbet was already a popular dish throughout the Middle East, but Antonio was responsible for adding milk, which most culinary historians consider the first official ice cream. In 1686, a Sicilian man named Francesco Procopio opened Paris's first cafe. The establishment became a meeting place for many famous intellectuals, including Benjamin Franklin, Victor Hugo, and Napoleon. The cafe also introduced gelato, which is the Italian version of sorbet, to the French public. It was served in small porcelain bowls resembling egg cups. Procopio became known as the father of Italian gelato. It was no surprise that when many Europeans began colonizing America, they took their precious ice cream with them. Ice cream was a popular dish amongst the rich because it was very tedious to make. Back then, you needed to own a cow to get milk. You needed access to large quantities of sugar and salt, which at the time was only available through import. And most importantly, you needed ice. The only way of getting ice before the invention of freezers was to cut ice blocks from the river in the winter and store it in an ice house until the summer. Most houses did not own an ice house, so ice cream remained a luxury for the wealthy. It's no wonder that this dish was a staple at the White House. Presidents like George Washington and Thomas Jefferson are credited with not only popularizing the dessert, but also making it more efficiently. Although they received the credit, the real ice cream hero was a black man named Augustus Jackson. Augustus Jackson was born a free man in Philadelphia in 1808. In the 1820s, Augustus was working as a chef in the White House and was introduced to the primitive technique for making ice cream. He recognized the flaws in the process and set out to make the dish more efficiently. He left the White House to start his own confectioner's business, and it was then that he perfected the technique that we use today to make ice cream. Not only did he make the process affordable and accessible to everyone, but he also introduced a slew of new flavors such as strawberry, vanilla, and mint. Through his sweet and creamy treats, he built a successful business, opening his own shop and selling his ice cream to many vendors. By the time of his death, he was tremendously wealthy, and he had the monopoly on ice cream. When he died, he left his fortune to his daughter, who ran the business successfully until it became too demanding. Although Augustus' business went under, his success influenced other black confectioners to rise. Eventually, confections became a very lucrative career amongst our ancestors. Augustus made ice cream an iconic summer treat, but we all know that its signature trademark is its perfect scoop, and that we owe to one man, Alfred L. Crow. Alfred, a Virginia native, was a black businessman and inventor who was born just after the Civil War. During this period, many of our ancestors sought educational opportunities and Alfred was one of the many who left his home in Virginia and traveled to Washington, D.C. to seek higher education. After a few years at the Wayland Seminary, he moved to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where he found employment as a porter at a drugstore. It was here that he noticed many confectioners struggling to scoop ice cream out of the tub and place it neatly into the cone. 
Ice cream was sticky, so this process usually required two hands. Alfred decided to simplify the process by creating the mechanical device we now know today as the ice cream scoop. This device could be operated with one hand and came in a variety of shapes, including a cone. Although Alfred received a patent for his invention, other ice cream scoops and molds began to pop up and unsurprisingly, he never profited from his invention. Although we had a lot to do with the mass consumption of ice cream, even that became a target for racism. Sugar consumption became rife with negative connotations and eventually our ancestors were forced out of the industry, leaving it wide open for white corporations. Even the famous ice cream truck song that we all know and love has its roots in racism. Based off the original song, The Turkey and the Straw, the ice cream jingle rose to popularity during the menstrual soul era, where it was remixed into the catchy tune, Nigga Love a Watermelon, ha ha ha. This song became a staple in ice cream parlors across America in the 1900s and continued to draw in crowds when it transitioned to the ice cream trucks. Truck owners wanted to give their patrons a feeling of the good old days. And what better way to do that than to sprinkle it with some ice cold racism? Although we have been written out of confectioner's history, we know that Augustus Jackson and Alfred L. Crow paved the way for companies like Edie's, Turkey Hill, and Ben and & Jerry's. So next time you reach for a delicious ice cream cone, just remember, we did that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tasty episode of Nacho Typical News. For more information on anything you've seen here today, please visit the links below in my description. And I'll catch you back here next time for some great food, some great fun, and some what? That's right, guys, some even greater history. See you next time. Bye.